All right, so this is gonna be a weird little experiment. Um, so here's the motherboard here, and um, this is the CPU I wanna put in. Now this is a 1.4 um, gigahertz Thunderbird Athlon chip. Uh, socket A, this is a Socket A motherboard. Um, now the thing is, this board in paper doesn't officially support this chip, it only supports up to a gigahertz uh, CPU, but looking at the specs, I don't see why it wouldn't support this. It, it's the same front side bus, voltage and everything, um, uh, maybe just in the BIOS it doesn't, um, but I don't know. So I don't really have much to lose here, so uh, I'm going to put this CPU in this socket and I'm going to see if it works. Um, so uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, all right, well, look at that. It works. And the bio sees it and everything. And according to everything I was reading on the internet and the manuals for this motherboard, it didn't support this processor. Um, but that's probably because this processor wasn't out, uh, I'm guessing. The board came out and the processor came out later. Uh, but it seems to support it just fine, which is awesome. Hello guys, welcome back. Today's video we're going to be looking at this guy which I kind of cobbled together. Um, maybe one or two months ago, uh, if you watch my videos, I did a face-off between a uh, 1.4 gigahertz Athlon Thunderbird and a 1.4 gigahertz Pentium 3 to Latin. Now I, almost all the time you guys always correct me on the pronunciation of that and I, I do, I appreciate it and even usually before these videos I'll look at it and I'll be like to Latin, to uh, I'll practice it, and then I always screw it up uh, in the heat of the moment in these videos. So uh, I, it's probably pointless to correct my pronunciation on to Latin, to Latin anymore. But I, I do try. I just I, I don't know. It just leaves my head when I make these videos. But anyways, um, that was the video, and uh, I found a use uh, for the 1.4 Pentium 3. Uh, that's another build. That's going to be a video probably a while from now. Uh, but I wanted to do something with that 1.4 gigahertz uh, Athlon Thunderbird because, did I say, call it an XP earlier? It's a Thunderbird, so it's the original line of, uh, of Athlons. Um, so it's kind of a cool uh, cool CPU, uh, came out the, the same time as the uh, 1.4 uh, gigahertz Pentium 3. Um, just, just an interesting chip, so I wanted to do something with it. Um, so I kind of pobbled this machine together from parts, and I call this thing the DOSzilla because what I wanted to do, I wanted to do just make a really fast DOS machine. Um, so I, I, we're just going to kind of see how this uh, CPU from I think 2002-ish, around the early 2000s, we're going to see how it performs in like late DOS games. Maybe we'll even test some earlier uh, DOS games and just just see how it performs for fun. Um, we'll go over this machine really quick and I'll go over the motherboard again. Uh, so we've just got, you know, I went very basic with this machine. We've got our CD-ROM drive, uh, we have a 1.44 megabyte, and we have a zip drive which is very convenient in these machines. Now, for the operating system, I did go with good old DOS 6.22, but originally, uh, just to mix things up, I did want to go with DOS 7.1, and um, that's the DOS that came with Windows 98. I believe 95 as well. And it's basically the same, very compatible, but it supports FAT32, so you're not limited uh, with your hard drive size. You can have really big hard drives. Um, and I even found this, well, I mean, it's just the thing with thing, but it's it, it, actual uh, CD ISO that you could burn to a CD that actually installs uh, DOS 7.1 uh, just like any other operating system, and it, it's really nifty. Like, uh, you've got all kind of drivers on here, and it's kind of like an automatic install process. Uh, it's pretty slick. I really liked it, but um, even though it installed fine, I had problems with DOS 7.1. Uh, even though it saw my whole hard drive, uh, I just had a slew of problems. The sound card wasn't working right. Um, it, it was just doing weird things. Uh, it, it was moving around. It, it's this sounds weird, um, but you know I would. Install, put a CD in for like, let's say Duke 3D. I'd install it, set it up, 
Uh, of course, when I tried to set it up, the sound effects worked, but the music didn't. And then when I went to play it, it would say, like, no CD drive or something like that. Uh, even though it had just installed from that CD drive. And I also got, like, weird op opticode CPU errors. Um, once I reformatted it and I re installed DOS 6.22, I have had no issues. Um, now, I think it probably has more to do with, like, weird driver issues, but I did try to fix that. I tried using, um, not using the drivers included on this and installing my own CD-ROM drivers. I tried uh, my own, you know, the drivers for the sound card, and it just, it still didn't work. So I just, I fell back on DOS 6.22. Now, depending on time and how lazy I am, uh, at the end of this video, I might, because uh, I'm, this is just for fun, I'm not keeping this thing around in the state it's in, um, I might reformat it, and then I'll reinstall this, and uh, we'll see if I have problems with it afterwards. And I'll show you the install process with this, if I decide to do that. So, uh, let me open this up, and uh, I'll show inside. Now, the thing I wanted to do with this machine is I was going for max, I wasn't going for speed. Um, even though this is way overkill for DOS, um, I really was going for compatibility. Uh, so that's what I looked at when I was looking into the, what video card I wanted to put in this. And I also like that this, um, this motherboard has an ISA slot for the sound card, uh, which is really important with DOS. Now, for late DOS games, it's not as important. You can use a PCI uh, sound card for very late DOS stuff. But I was just going for pure compatibility. So. Um, this does, this motherboard does have the ISA slot, and I'll talk about that more in a minute here. Alright, so here we're going to look inside the machine. I moved the uh, power supply out of the way so we could see the motherboard. Now the thing I don't like about this case, um, I, it's just because it's a smaller case, so there's not a lot of room, is the power supply goes right here, right above the CPU. And the Athlons, uh, the Thunderbirds, especially like the later models like this 1.4 gigahertz, tend to run a little bit hot. Um, so I don't really like how there's not a lot of room for like air circulation there, but uh, you know, what can you do? It's the case I have to work with. Um, here's our RAM. I'm just using uh, one stick of PC-133. Um, this is 512 megabytes. Uh, super overkill for DOS, but uh, you know, that's just what we're going with here. Um, now this motherboard is a Tyen S2390. Um, and we have our AGP slot. Uh, this isn't like a times eight. This is a, I think it's a times four AGP. Just got some PCI slots. A lot of them actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, although like this one is shared. And then we have one 16 bit ISA slot, which is nice for our sound card. Now, if you want to make a really fast, like late period, uh, you know, DOS machine, uh, you really want an ISA slot for sound, um, although with later DOS games you can get away with a PCI card, uh, like a Vortex 2 based um, sound card. But uh, it, you really, this is kind of one of the last kind of motherboards to support uh, ISA. It really started fading away quick. So you can find these on these um, Thunderbird boards and uh, also on the Pentium 3 boards. Um, now there are later ones I believe that still had these, like I believe there are some Pentium 4 boards. Uh, that have ISA slots, but they're really hard to find, and they're usually like industrial boards for like industrial uses where legacy support was a lot more important. Um, so you might have a hard time finding something like a Pentium 4 uh, board with an ISA slot, but they are out there. Um, so let's look at the other components. Again, um, I just, I put this together to be really simple, so there's really not too much to it. Um, the hard drive I'm using, I believe it's a 40 or an, I believe it's a 40 gigabyte drive. Um, it's a Max Tor and it's actually ATA-133. Um, now this board has built in IDE, uh, but it, I believe it's ATA, I believe it's like 33, no, so, um, I didn't have a, I didn't have a IDE controller that was, uh, 133 around, but I did have this Promise Technologies uh, ATA 100, so that's something. I just threw this in and it seems to work fine. Um, for sound, I just went with this guy because I had it sitting around. This is uh, ISA for compatibility, and this is a uh, AW64 uh, CT4500. Now I believe this is just the base card. This isn't 
Uh, this obviously isn't the gold, and I don't think that this isn't the value one either. So this is just your base uh, run-of-the-mill uh, stock AWE or AW64. Now in DOS, this operates just like an AW32. Um, doesn't have a real uh, OPL chip for FM, but we're really focusing on late era stuff anyways. And uh, this this actually does a very good job. It's very compatible. Uh, I would recommend using these in, in uh, DOS rigs. So now lastly, we're going to look at the video card I used, uh, which is this guy. Now this is the S3 Savage 4 Pro. Uh, specifically, this is from Diamond Multimedia. And this is the Stealth 3, it probably won't focus, doesn't really matter. It's a Stealth 3 uh, S540. Now, when I got this, I was hoping it had the uh, extreme version of the Savage 4, but, because some of them do, some of the S40s do, uh, but this one did not. This one just has the uh, S3 Savage 4 Pro uh, chipset. Might even be the Pro Plus, I can't really tell, but uh, that's good enough. Um, 32 megabytes of video RAM on here. Overkill, probably for DOS, even late DOS. Uh, I basically, this is not the fastest card out there, even for DOS, but it is by far, maybe not by far, but it is one of the most compatible ones. Um, now, TNT2 and the Voodoo 3 are around the same era, and they are they're excellent with compatibility, but you know, S3 always had a reputation for compatibility with DOS. So I just went with this card just for pure compatibility. And I haven't played with this much, so uh, when I do these benchmarks and game tests, it's gonna be just as interesting for me as it might be for you guys. So um, again, I, I wanted to do something a little bit different too, and that's why I went with this uh, the Savage 4 Pro chipset. So I'm gonna put all this back together and then uh, we're just going to run some benchmarks. Okay, it's dark so you probably can't really see, but here's something interesting. Um, here's the computer here and I'm going to boot it up, and it's going to boot up normally, probably. So, then here's our screen up here, and there we go, it just came on, got our one beat for post. And there we go, looks all good. We've got the Athlon at 1.4 gigahertz. There's the, uh, that, that IDE, the 100, ATA 100 card. Seeing the hard drive. And we're, it looks, it's all looking good. We're going into uh, DOS 6.22. And there we go, and we're in. And it, that's all normal, it all is fine, okay? So, now watch this. All right, so all we have here is a VGA splitter. Now I've done this a ton of times uh, for capturing. So it comes out of the video card, it goes into here and it just splits the VGA signal. This one goes to the monitor and this one goes to my other computer with the capture device. That's it, there shouldn't be anything else going on here except the splitting of the signal once it is out of the computer. Um, so now watch when I power it on. <laughs> now, looking up that beep code, that's an extended memory error. And then we look up here, and if you notice, the color is gone from the, the energy thing there. Um, and it will still load up, like, just fine, but it will be weird. Um, watch this mess. It's like VGA is out. Um, do, 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 do. Now look at this message I got now. No VGA, use older CT mouse if you need EGA RIL support. That, that message didn't come up before. And if I go into something like the BIOS, instead of, you know, the usual blue, it's like the color, it's, it's monochrome. Um, like gray, black, and white. Uh, <laughs> now I went to test this further and I ran Duke 3D and, um, the beginning of it is actually like when it's it's saying the stuff here like loading up. Well, I'll show you. Okay, so I have Duke 3D installed and I'm gonna run it. And um, here we go. Oops, that is not the enter button. Sorry, you can see the lamp there, but look. Okay, so that's supposed to be red up there. Obviously it's not. But when the game starts, it's fine, it's in, it's VGA. Um, 
I don't know what's going on here. It, I mean, other than being annoying and the beeping, it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Um, but I don't know why the splitter is doing that. It, it shouldn't. I mean, I can see how it's affecting the video coming out, but I've never had that happen before with any machine that I've used this thing on. This is like the only time that has ever happened. Um, and maybe that's a quirk of the Savage 4 chipset? Um, I don't know. I'll, I'm gonna have to look into that more, but it's, it's weird and I don't like it. Alright, so we'll just start off with the usual benchmarks here. I'm comparing DOSzilla against my uh, old fast DOS computer standby, uh, my Pentium 233 with the, uh, the thick motherboard with the 2 megabytes of L2 cache. Um, so Wolf 3D, uh, for some reason, did not work on the Pentium machine. I have no idea why. Uh, the retail version works, but the demo wouldn't work. It would freeze up. Um, but on DOSzilla, I got 125.8 frames per second. Uh, 3D Bench Dozilla stomps uh, the Pentium uh, 233 MMX machine, just stomps it. Um, PCP Bench at 640 by 480, uh, kind of close. Um, same with Doom. Um, my math skills are really bad, but from my estimation, is uh, Doom only runs about 30% slower than Dozilla. Um, I don't know if this is some kind of limiter or VSync or something like that going on that's but um, uh, Dosilla still beats uh, Doom, but uh, just not by nearly as much as I thought. This could be the video card too. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Quake, Quake, um, yeah, Dosilla still stomps the uh, Pentium. Not the, quite as horrifically as, as one might suspect, though. What is that? Uh, 112 uh, frames per second against the uh, Pentiums. What is that? 43. Uh, at 640 by 480 so um, yeah those are the, the, uh, the standard benchmarks so let's just look at some games now and how they play Yeah, I'm sure there's someone uh, right now thinking, hey, uh, learn how to strafe, but yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, Doom runs perfectly fine. Uh, sounds fine on the on the AW64, which is working as a AW32. Uh, um, no graphical issues, no issues, difficulties with startup or setting up sound or anything. It just runs buttery smooth, runs like a dream. Um, I'm running all these games on their highest settings, uh, by the way, so this is whatever. I don't recall it off the top of my head, but it's set on, you know, high detail, highest settings, highest resolution that uh, the game permits uh, for Ultimate Doom, and game runs just fine, no issues at all. Next we have, of course, Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, again, no problems at all, uh, even with the, the setup. I've had, this game has been finicky with me in the past with setup and sound setup, uh, especially for some reason, maybe just my luck. Um, no problems here though, it's set up just fine, very minimal problems. Uh, if it sounds weird in this member, uh, my capture setup isn't exactly like the best, especially with with audio, so it might sound a little bit muffled, but in gameplay, uh, it, you know, on my main computer, it sounds just fine. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty buttery smooth. Um, again, highest settings, and uh, 
no problems at whatsoever. Now, keep in mind, I didn't play it for hours and hours on end, uh, but just from my sampling of this game, no problems. Ran great on this machine. Alright, here we go. Dark Forces. Uh, this is another first person shooter game. Maybe a little taxing on sl a slower DOS computer. Um, didn't notice any issues with the sound. Sounded a little off with me, but maybe that's because I'm not used to how the, the AW32 does sound in this game. Uh, so that, that may be why it sounded weird to me. But other than that, I didn't really see any graphical glitches, speed issues, uh, anything really at all. And for all I know, the sound is, is spot on. I'm, I'm just not used to it being done through the AW32. Alright, so here's Descent 2. Now this I do have the full retail version of this game, but I didn't want to dig it out of a box, so I downloaded the demo version. And the thing is, uh, I couldn't get it out of 320 by 200 resolution. I really set uh, you know details at high, but I think that's a limitation of running the demo version. So unfortunately with this game, uh, it's going to be running in a lower uh, resolution. I couldn't really test it the highest resolution. So, uh, I guess if I wasn't being lazy, I could have dug out my retail copy, but um, you know. Anyways, this is the first game I tested that actually had an issue, and it just it ran too fast. Uh, it was almost impossible to control. Um, that weird like bobbing effect you'll see in a minute. Uh, it was just so fast and disorienting. Um, now I did find that if you go back, uh, if you restart the computer and you go into the BIOS and you disable the uh, CPU cache, the internal CPU cache, uh, the speed does become. I don't know if it's spot on perfect, but. Uh, it seems, you know, completely playable. So, uh, like, for certain games, like, you, know, you can see it's just running way fast. That bobbing is ridiculous. So, uh, for games like this, just go and uh, first thing to try is uh, disabling that internal cache on the CPU through the BIOS. And for this game, it pretty much fixed the speed issue. Thousands of years, an unspeakable evil has waited in the shadows. Now, in the dark days of the 21st century, the waiting period is nearly complete. Soon, the incubus of evil will lash out, 
and the fate of mankind will hang in the balance. Tex Murphy, the hero of mean streets and Martian memoranda, aimlessly wanders above the streets of San Francisco in his speed. So this is Tex Murphy under a killing moon. Uh, this is the demo version of the game, and yes, uh, that's not the recording software. It actually plays that stuttery uh, on my main machine, uh, on the, the DOSzilla. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's like the demo version and it's not optimized, or it's just... Just something's going on. That's just how it is, maybe. Um, it's just a weird FMV. Once you get into the game, it seems to run uh, okay. Uh, this is another game I never played before until I tested it here, and it's... Oh, man, the control's so weird. Um, there's probably a way to adjust it, but it's just like... You move forward by pushing the mouse forward, and you... I, I don't know. I, I didn't really look and see if you can mess around with the controls, uh, but... Just really awkward, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it runs fine, except for that, like, stuttering with the FMV at the beginning, but that just might be how the game is. I don't know. I haven't tried it on another machine. Um, but other than that, it seems to play okay. Wow. A recyclable paper can. Finally. A glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Yeah, what do you want? Looks like you're busy drowning your troubles, my good man. Well, Mr. High and Mighty, what are you, a preacher or something? So here's an example of a game that didn't work, but it's not because of the speed of this machine. Uh, Major Striker seems to have a problem with larger sized hard drives. It seems like a, a gig and up. Uh, it goes nuts. It reports it as like a negative and it says that there's no room. Um, also notice the color is gone because I was running it through my VGA splitter, which is weird with this machine or, and or video card. Um, so no fault of the machine speed on that one. All right, so here's Commander Keen Episode 4. Uh, this makes a good game to test, you know, because it's a little bit older, and I know some video cards have uh, issues with the scrolling in it. Now, as you'll notice right away, it's in black and white, and that's because I captured this uh, using my VGA splitter, which, as I said before, uh, it seems like if a game or something is outputting, like, EGA or CGA, uh, it, it ends up black and white. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I it, it doesn't do this with any other machine I've used it on, and I've used it on quite a few. Um, but it it does it with this. I, I suspect maybe it's the video card, the Savage Four, for whatever reason. Uh, but this game uh, does work in color, and I'll show you that in one second. So here's the game, uh, not going through my VGA splitter, and I'm just pointing the camera at the uh, CRT, which is why we have that annoying flicker, and I apologize for that. My camera's really cheap, and uh, it doesn't have the option to, you know, sync it to the frame rate of the CRT. Either that or I haven't figured out how to do that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it looks fine, and it plays fine. Uh, it's just I can't play any of these games uh, like this with that VGA splitter, so I can't do a direct capture. But um, yeah. This is another game, it just plays, sounds just fine. Alright, now for the main attraction to see if this overpowered DOS rig will actually be able to play uh, Quake smoothly in 1280 by 1024. Uh, so, 
It's pretty high resolution. Uh, most machines of the day would slow down to a frame uh, slideshow. Um, but we'll see how this machine can handle it here. So as we can hear, see here, yeah, it, it's pretty choppy. I mean, technically it's playable. Uh, I know a lot of people would find this really unacceptable and unplayable. Um, it really depends on your tolerance. Like I said, for me, like technically it's playable, but like I would much rather play it in a lower resolution than uh, play it this choppy. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this could be fixed with a faster CPU or a faster, even the this, this same machine just putting, if I put in a faster video card here. Um, but you do see, if you do lower the resolution to uh, 1024 by 760, it actually uh, plays quite nicely. Um, and that's still a good resolution for this game. So, um, yeah, just lower the resolution a little bit and it plays just fine. Also keep in mind this is just straight out Quake uh, done in software. This is not GL Quake, so I don't know how GL Quake would run. Uh, it would probably run better, uh, maybe take more advantage of the video card. But we're just trying straight out software Quake. So what are my opinions here on DOSzilla? Well, uh, initially I'm I'm kind of impressed uh, with its compatibility, seeing it as its speed is so overkill. But then again, I only really tested a super small fraction of the PC games and DOS games out there. Um, I know there's some people that have staggering PC game collections, which I hear 10,000 or more games, and there, I know there are a ton of DOS games out there. And me just testing, you know, six or seven, um, I even tested some games outside of this video that worked fine. I tested Double Dragon, tested the retail version of uh, Wolfenstein 3D, they worked fine. Um, so I mean that's probably not even one percent of the DOS games out there. So just because like you know uh, eight out of ten or nine out of ten of those games worked, um, you know that doesn't exactly give me a great view of the compatibility. So I'm I'm sure there's plenty of games out there where the speed will definitely affect it, like Descent Two did, and uh, even disabling that cache won't help. Um, but I think you know between with the video card and having the ISA sound card stuff, it, it, it's actually a pretty compatible system, and, and even more so if you're dealing with you know those late DOS games, it works pretty well. Um, I was also impressed with its ability to uh, you know display some of those later games in high resolution. It did pretty well with Quake. Um, like I said, the higher resolution um, in software Quake that I was getting was it was it was very playable depending on who you are. Uh, Again, for a lot of people these days, that wouldn't have been an acceptable frame rate. But if you drop the resolution just a little bit, uh, you can still play the game in a higher resolution um, just fine. Now, again, I didn't check out GL Quake, which would, uh, I believe, it would take advantage of the, uh, the Savage 4. Um, so I, I didn't do that. I, I don't know. I just haven't played with GL Quake uh, ever. <laughs> so I, I should probably check that out. Um, but yeah, it's it does it's a pretty decent machine. Again, you, you can make this faster. Uh, you can just you can get a faster video card um, that might hurt you with compatibility because you know the S3 is very DOS compatible. But you could throw something much faster in there. Um, you could throw in a faster uh, processor if you got you know one of those later boards. Like I said, I believe they made Pentium four boards and even 
uh, Athlon XP boards with ISA slots. They're a little bit hard to find, and I just threw this thing together with what I had laying around. So, yes, you can make this faster. It will probably affect your compatibility a little bit more. But overall, yeah, I am happy with this system. Um, it was a neat little experiment. Um, I'm probably not going to keep this machine around. I'll probably disassemble it and use it pieces for something else since uh, I'm not really too interested on in playing. I have a lot of DOS machines and I'd rather play them on something a little more period correct. Um, you can go crazy with this thing. You could put it in modern cases and use more modern. You could use SSDs and what that. It's not really my game, my style. I, I wanted to do something overkill but I still wanted to keep sort of an older school retro aesthetic. Um, thus the older case there. So yeah, it's a neat, interesting project. If you have the parts, uh, check it out, put one together, uh, play some of those games, higher resolution. So uh, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. Uh, I appreciate all of your comments. Um, I appreciate your subscribing. I appreciate you know everyone that views this channel. Uh, thank you guys again, and I'll, I'll see you next time.